Given the fact that this channel focuses on low and zero tailpipe emission transport, mostly battery electric vehicles, you might assume by association that I'm not really a car person. Or perhaps you might assume that I like cars, but only certain types. I'm guessing that large boxy 4x4s aren't on your list of cars that you think I might enjoy. But my dirty little secret is that I'm not only a classic car fan, yes, that includes internal combustion engine ones, I'm also a sucker for old school off-roaders. Think original Land Rover Series 2 and original Defender. I'm sure part of it was down to the fact that I grew up on a farm and there's nothing more practical on a farm than a 4x4 that can go anywhere and do anything. And in my home country of the UK, there's nothing more suited to that task than a Land Rover, at least the original Defender, or rather the Series 1 and Series 2 Land Rovers. And that's no coincidence, because actually the original Land Rover was designed as a multi-purpose farm vehicle capable of ploughing the field, but then also carrying farm produce and the entire farm family to market at the weekend. Despite my love for the eminently fixable, go-anywhere, rugged nature of the Land Rover, however, they do have one little problem. They're powered by an internal combustion engine. So when Land Rover debuted its test fleet of electric Land Rover Defenders, I got super excited. I even drove one at the special event that Jaguar Land Rover held for the 65th anniversary of the brand. And at that point, I genuinely thought that Jaguar Land Rover would pursue the idea of building an all-electric off-roader based on my experiences that day. But according to a report from Autocar last week, Jaguar Land Rover is already well into a new £73.5 million programme in the UK, which is also funded by the UK government, that includes developing a hydrogen fuel cell electric SUV drivetrain. Nicknamed Project Zeus, the idea behind the project is to build a hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain that could be used to power a future hydrogen fuel cell SUV. Given the struggle that Jaguar Land Rover has experienced selling the I-Pace, this story could easily be interpreted that Jaguar Land Rover is eager to stop producing electric vehicles and is instead going all out on hydrogen. To be clear, however, that's not the story. Jaguar Land Rover has not confirmed any specific hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, only development on possible drivetrains for use in one. And to be fair to the brand, most, if not all, automakers out there have hydrogen fuel cell electric programs. GM has one, Ford has one, so too does Audi, BMW, Volkswagen, Renault, Nissan, the list goes on. But today I'm here to talk to you about why I think hydrogen fuel cells are a bad idea for Jaguar Land Rover to use in its vehicles. You see, even though some reports claim that Jaguar Land Rover sees diminishing returns in full-size battery electric vehicles capable of off-road, like the Range Rover and Land Rover families, I'm going back to first principles to argue why they're inherently preferable to using a hydrogen fuel cell system for the same. As an automaker who we know has suffered some pretty big financial troubles of late as people shift their car buying choices, the Jaguar side of Jaguar Land Rover really isn't doing well right now. It seems strange to plough a large amount of money into a technology that's not only very much in its infancy, but also so far behind a rival zero emission technology, namely battery electrics, that it really doesn't make sense. At this point, I could talk to you about challenges with fueling infrastructure or challenges related to how we generate hydrogen fuel. While electrolysis is now far more advanced than it was in terms of efficiency and yield, most of today's hydrogen is produced through the steam reforming of natural gas, which is a fossil fuel. But I'm pretty sure you've heard those arguments before, so I'm going to argue from a different place. Everyday usability. For urbanites using Chelsea tractors, read high-end Range Rovers that rarely see the night sky without a street lamp, let alone a dirt track, you could argue that hydrogen fuel cells have an advantage for those who don't have access to off-street charging or parking. But then again, if you're spending upwards of $70,000 on a big SUV, the chances are you probably already have somewhere to charge it overnight, so moot point. I really don't want to pander to stereotypes here about that, but well, based on my experience, that's certainly true. Sure, on road trips, refueling a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle could 
theoretically on paper at least, be faster than refueling with electricity. But with the aforementioned limitations in infrastructure and higher speed charging now possible thanks to next generation 800 volt charging systems coming to market, well, the amount of time you spend charging an electric car is getting smaller all the time. You only have to look at Tesla for that. And of course, you already know my thoughts about driving long distances without taking appropriate breaks every few hours. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go there. But then there's the reality of hydrogen fuel cell systems. Unlike battery electric vehicles, where the battery pack can pretty much reside under the vehicle floor without impacting ground clearance too much, hydrogen fuel cell vehicle drivetrains and power systems take up a lot more space. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles add on top of that a fuel tank or tanks and a hydrogen fuel cell stack, which traditionally has required significant cooling in order to operate. Granted, the battery pack is smaller in a fuel cell electric vehicle, but overall, everything takes up more space. A large vehicle like a Range Rover might be able to accommodate that more than a mid or a compact sized vehicle, but nevertheless, the more stuff you fit under the hood, the less space you have inside for passengers and cargo. In a market where frunks are becoming the norm for the new range of zero emission vehicles, including crossovers and SUVs, well, that seems like a backward step should Jaguar Land Rover go to hydrogen. Finally, there are those who use off-roaders like the original Land Rover Defender for adventure and real-world off-roading. Battery electric vehicles, as proven many times by some great adventurers, some friends of mine, really aren't limited to city life. You really can travel around the world in them. Given how many people choose Land Rovers for off-road adventures around the world, well, how do I put this? Hydrogen isn't ubiquitous. Gasoline and diesel most certainly are in most communities, but so too is electricity in many parts of the world. Even if you don't have mains electricity and you only have batteries, you can still refuel a battery electric vehicle from them. As to the origins of the Land Rover brand, the agricultural world, with more and more farmers diversifying into wind and solar farms, being able to charge up a workhorse from the power they generate on their farm has to be a better solution than having to rely on external hydrogen sources. And no, I'm not including the hydrogen fuel cell Mirai powered by cow poo that Toyota once tried to tell us would be the future when it launched the Mirai a few years back. <laughs> and I grew up on a dairy farm. The final nail in the coffin is repairability. The original Land Rover brand was pretty repairable. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are, like internal combustion engine ones, fairly complicated. Battery electrics are complicated, but less so. And sure, there are computers aplenty in any modern EV, but at the heart of it, they're simple systems with minimal moving parts, which means less that can go wrong. If I had to bet which was more repairable at the side of the road, I think I'd choose battery electric every day over hydrogen fuel cell electric. Does hydrogen have a place? Absolutely, as a range extender, but for heavy off-roaders, I think Land Rover Jaguar needs to follow Tesla, Rivian, and Bollinger. Stick to batteries, guys. That's it for today's video. I'm glad you stopped by. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment, and subscribe. And you can support us using the links below, which also now include Ko-fi, Patreon, and Bitcoin. Don't forget too, that you can chat with the rest of the team on Discord. There is a link also below. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll also get special access to our Discord chats for Patreons. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks also go to Jeffrey Songster, John Lyons and Regine Fellows. There are $50 a month self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our Starman level patrons. That's Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea. If you're looking for something else to enjoy from this channel, Google thinks you might enjoy that one. So go check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. In the meantime, wash your hands, stay safe and work to become a better kind of person, strive for equality and treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. Oh, and of course, wear a mask if you're out and about. Thank you for joining me and until next time, keep evolving.